European European Non-Associative Algebra Seminar and our seminar, Operator Algebras and Their Applications. Today, our speaker is Professor Yun He Sheng. His joint work with Chen Ming Bai, Li Guo, Hong Li Lang, and Rong Tang. Yes? Yeah. The it's title right. of the talk is Rota Baxter Operators and Post Groups. So you're welcome. Okay, thank you. So uh, thank Professor Ayu Pope for the introduction. And I also would like to thank the organizers for uh, organizing the European Associative Algebra Seminar and the Seminar Operator Algebra and their applications. It is my great pleasure and great honor to talk in these two seminars uh, in one time to introduce my work. Okay. So uh, the work is about the box operators on groups and the post groups. So uh, I begin with the definition of a rotabox operator on associative algebra. So let A be a be an associative algebra and uh, a rotabox operator on A of with lambda is a linear map B from A to A such that the following equality is satisfied. So here lambda is is an arbitrary number in the base field. So actually there are two cases only, namely lambda is zero or lambda is not zero. So because for the non-zero lambda, actually they are equivalent to lambda equals to one. Yeah, actually we only need to consider two cases, lambda is zero and the lambda is one. So yeah, and uh, so- depends on the ground yes. So. Sorry. So over complex over complex numbers, it is possible to do zero unit. But if over real numbers, perhaps not always. Or yeah, lambda. Yeah, lambda. If lambda is non zero, then actually they are isomorphic to the case of lambda is equal to one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So there are many applications of rotabox operators in both mathematics and analysis and mathematical physics actually. So, uh, but uh, since uh, I'm working on Poisson geometry, so which is related to the Lie theory, so in the SQL, so we will only consider rotabox operator on Lie algebras and uh, their applications. So for more details about Rotabox operators, uh, please see the book written by Professor Li Guo. Yeah. Okay, so I give two very simple example. So let the operator B equals to minus lambda times ID. So then it is a Rotabox operator of bit lambda. Uh, another example is the box operator of weight zero. Namely, we consider uh, the algebra A is the function ring. Yeah. So we define the operator B to be the integration. We denote the integration by capital F of X. Then we know so the derivative of capital Fx is small Fx. Then using the integration by parts, we have this formula, so it's very easy. Then writing using B, so we have this equality. Then we see, so B is a Rotabax operator of weight zero. Okay. So actually this B also known as the integ integration operator. So Rotabax operator, are somehow generalizations of the box operator, uh, of the integration operator, yeah. Uh, so in the SQL, we will only consider the box operator on the algebras. So we replace associative algebras by the algebras. Namely, we replace this multiplication dot by the Lie bracket, then we can obtain uh, the notion of the box operator on a Lie 
on the Lie algebra immediately without any difficulty. So it's, it is almost trivial, you can see. So here is the definition. So namely, G is a Lie algebra and B is a linear map satisfying this equality. Yeah. Then B is called a root box operator and uh, the pair G and B is called the root box Lie algebra. Uh, in the SQL, we will need a more general notion, a uh, relative root box operator. So here, relative means relative to an arbitrary representation or action. So let phi from G to dir H be an action of a Lie algebra G on a Lie algebra H. Then a linear map T from H to G is called a relative root box operator on G with respect to this action if the following equality is satisfied. So compare these two, e two equations you can see. So we only replace this Lie bracket by this arbitrary action or representation. Namely, namely uh, if H is abelian, so here is only a representation. So if this action reduced to the adjoint action, namely the Lie bracket, so then we obtain root box operator. Yeah. So this is a, a generalization. Okay. Uh, we give another example. So we consider a Lie algebra G to be the direct sum of two sub algebras G1 and G2. So here G1 and G2 are only sub algebras. Mm. So G is their direct sum as vector spaces, not as algebras. Then we define T to be the projection, uh, the manner of the projection and uh, the box operator of the one. Okay. Uh, so another background is about the modified young box equation. Uh, so let G be a Lie algebra, uh, let R be a linear map. Then we consider a new bracket defined by R as follows. So this R, is defined by this formula. It's very easy. Now the question is under what condition this bracket is a Lie bracket. So Semenov of Tiensansky showed that it satisfies Jacobi identity if and only if the following equality holds. So here C dot P dot means cyclic permutation. So by this equation, we can obtain the following sufficient condition immediately. Namely, we consider this term RVRW minus RVW R bracket is equal to minus the bracket of V at W. Then here, uh, the cyclic permutation is zero by the Jacobi identity of the original Lie algebra. So we can have this sufficient condition, and then this condition is called the modified young box equation. Okay, so here you can see its form is very similar to this root box operator, but not the same. You can see because here this term is in the bracket, you see it's in the bracket, but here this term is outside bracket. So no R act on this term. Okay, but you can see they are similar. So uh, one naturally expects some relation between these two equations. Actually, it is true. So here's the following lemma. Establish the relation between uh, root box operator and the solutions of the modified young box equation. So B is a root box operator of with one if and only if R, which is defined by identity plus two times B, satisfy the modified young box equation. Okay, so their relation is very clear given by this formula. Okay, so uh, solutions of modified young box equation uh, have many applications. In, particular, in particular, Semenov Tiensensky gave the application in integrable systems. More precisely, for a solution of the modified young box equation, Semenov Tiensensky associated with a factorization theorem for the Lie algebra. Then 
the mean of tensor key takes the integration to obtain the factorization theorem for the corresponding Lie group. But uh, this factorization holds only in a small neighborhood of the unit. Then uh, he used this fact to study integrable systems. Uh, here, yeah, so here uh, we note that so this factorization is only local, okay, not global. Uh, another background I want to talk is post the algebras. Uh, so a post the algebra consists of a Lie algebra structure. So this is a Lie bracket and uh, another binary product, this triangle, such that the following two equations are satisfied. So the first uh, the first equation is very easy to be understood. Namely, you can see, so since this is a binary product, we can consider it's left, uh, multiply, left multiplication. So, so the first equation tells us that the left multiplication is a derivation. Yeah, so its meaning is very clear. Is a derivation with respect to the Lie bracket, and uh, the second equation, uh, yeah, it's uh, a little harder to be understood. Here, I'm sorry, I didn't write down what is a triangle. So this a means the associator. So we have a binary product triangle. Then we can consider whether it is an associative algebra, but uh, it is not an associative algebra, and the obstruction we define to be a triangle x, y, z. So it is called the, the associator of this binary product. So this associator satisfies this equality. Namely, the first two places is not symmetric, but the obstruction is given by this term. Okay. So actually, if the left hand side is zero, then we know actually this defined a pretty algebra, also called a left symmetric algebra. And the post the algebra, so you can see it is somehow some some generalizations of the algebra maybe, but there are two multiplications. Uh, it is very surprising that this kind of algebras play fundamental role in numerical analysis or numerical uh, integration. So uh, here are here here are some references. So, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, so this is a post the algebra. Uh, actually, there are close relation between rotobox operators and the post the algebras. Namely, rotobox operators play the role of splitting of algebras. So, given algebra and the given and rotobox operator, we can between new algebras. We can split this algebra. Yeah. So more precisely, let T be a relative with the box operator on a Lie algebra G with respect to an action. Then we can define a new multiplication on H by this formula. Then H together with the original Lie bracket and this multiplication we defined just now, it is a post Lie algebra. Yeah. So a root box operator naturally gave rise to a post the algebra. Okay, so from the definition, we can see that if in the post the algebra, if the Lie bracket is trivial, then obtain a pre algebra, namely a vector space G equipped with a multiplication triangle satisfying this equality. Yeah, once again, so this A means the associator. So, so this equation says that the, uh, the associator is symmetric in the first two entries. So it is also called a left symmetric algebra. So there are many uh, terminologies to name this algebra. Okay. Uh, Professor Smokinoichi proposed the following questions. Uh, namely, they consider pretty ring and breeze. So they consider whether there are uh, a passage from left, the, the potent breeze, 
to left and important pretty rings. Also consider the converse problem, namely given pretty ring or pretty edge or whether we can uh, obtain the global object. So here, braces is some kind of generalizations of groups. So we will give detailed definition later. Namely, actually they consider the, 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 the integration and the differentiation problem. <clears throat> but uh, there are some differences. Uh, they consider the base field is the finite field. But here we consider usually the real field or complex field. Yeah. And uh, so based on the above uh, background, so we have the following natural questions. So since we have the box operator on associative algebras, the Lie algebras, and also other kinds of algebras. <laughs> so whether we can consider the box operator on groups. And uh, if there are such structures, then we can consider whether it is the integration of the box the algebra. <laughs> because we know a Lie algebra can be integrated to a Lie groups. So here we have root box Lie algebra. So we naturally ask whether we can integrate it, root box Lie algebra to certain root box Lie groups. Yeah. And uh, I also talk about the factorization theorem given by Semenovsky and Sensky is local. And uh, we want to know whether it is possible to obtain the global factorization theorem. And uh, if these questions can be answered, since the Rotobox operator induces post the algebra, so we can also consider what is the integration of post the algebras. Also, since uh, pre the algebras are special cases of post the algebras, so actually we can uh, try to answer uh, Professor Smoknovich's question in a more general background. Yeah, we can consider the integration of post the algebras directly. Actually, so later we will see that. So uh, we consider this question in this small general uh, framework how many advantages. Yeah. Okay, namely, we want to yeah, consider this, this diagram, namely consider the integration of the box Lie algebra. So it turns out to be the box Lie group. And we consider uh, the integration of post Lie algebra, then it turns out to be post Lie groups. And at the algebra level, we have such splitting result. Then also we want to establish the such splitting result in the group level. Okay. So these are the main contents in the following talk. Okay. So uh, are there any questions about the background? Okay, good. Then uh, we arrive at the, the most important uh, definition in this talk. So we define what is the Rotobox operator on group. Actually here, it is not necessary to kiss the D group. So for any group, even finite group, it also works. But uh, since we consider the integration and the differenti differentiation problem, so here in this talk, we only consider D group, okay. But uh, it works for any group. So here is the definition. So G is a Lie group, and uh, a root box operator of width one on this group is a map B from G to G such that uh, it satisfies this equation. So BG times BH is equal to B of G times AD BGH. So this AD means the adjunct action of this Lie group G. Okay. Uh, so here's the definition. Excuse me. In the case of the groups, it will be just usual map, right? No, no, no conditions, right? Yes, yes. Well, for a general group, we just a, a map, not a smooth map. Yeah. Uh, so but, smooth map is in the uh, category D group. Yeah, you are correct. Can you define this notion for algebraic groups? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, actually, yeah, we yeah one can define such notion, but uh, uh, for algebra group, so. For this, I know that there are some results about the differentiation of integration of 
algebraic group, but uh, I'm not quite familiar. This is a very, very interesting problem. So whether we can obtain the following results, maybe I will talk about uh, differentiation or integration, such results to, to the context of algebraic, algebraic group. Yeah, it's a very interesting question. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Okay, we, we also need a more general notion relative to the box operator. So uh, we need an action phi, capital phi, from G to out H. So it is an action of the group G on the group H. Then a map B from H to G is called a relative to the box operator if the following equation is satisfied. So here you can see uh, we, we only replace this adult action adult action by this arbitrary action. So yeah, so it is uh, the natural generalization of this Rotomax operator. Then we can we can give our main result. Namely, if G B, this curly B is a Rotomax V group, then we consider its differentiation. So we know a leap group G gives rise to a the algebra small g. And uh, this capital B uh, not capital, this curly B. This curly B, you can see from this definition, we can obtain that B of E is E. So this E is the uh, identity in this D group. So B E is E. So then this curly B will, will induce a tangent map. So we define to be a uh, capital B. So it is from small g to small g. Then it turns out that this is the algebra G together with this capital B, it is a root box of the algebra of bit one. So this capital B is a root box, is a root box operator of bit one, okay. So the proof is not very complicated. So we recall some basic uh, notations in Lie theory, and we can uh, show the proof roughly, okay. So we know that if G is a Lie group, uh, and the E is identity, then we consider uh, the tangent space at E. So we denote it by this curly small g. It is a Lie algebra, and uh, we let this ESP to be the exponential map. Then the relation between this Lie bracket uh, and the Lie group multiplication is given by this important this important formula. Yeah. Also, since uh, curly B E is E, so we can consider the tangent map. So we denote it by uh, this capital B. So since B is the tangent map, so we have this uh, formula. So namely, uh, the relation between this curly B and this capital B. So we have this relation. So based on these formulas, we can give a proof. Namely, we want to show this capital B satisfy certain equalities. So we we uh, compute what is the bracket of BU and the BV. So then using the relation between this D bracket and the exponential map, so we can we can obtain this equality. Then using the relation between this capital B and the curly B, then we have this formula. Uh, then we can use the definition of a rotobox operator. Since this curly B is a rotobox operator, so B ESP SV, B ESP full, uh, ESP minus TU is equal to this guy. So this is just the definition of a rotobox operator. Then we use this definition once again, so we obtain this formula. Note that, so uh, differentiation satisfies the Leibniz rule. So we need to be very careful yeah, that using using the Leibniz rule, so we obtain this formula. Then, then we see it is exactly uh, this formula. So from here to here, we can see this capital B is exactly a rotor box operator of fit one. Yeah, actually, the proof is not very complicated, but we need to use uh, Leibniz rule and exponential map. Yeah, and the relation between ESP and the bracket. So about uh, the question uh, asked just now, so for algebraic, for algebraic 
group. So I'm not quite familiar with these formulas of whether there are similar results. So yeah, if there are similar results, so yeah, this question I think can be can be uh, yeah solved. Okay. Then so how we about, can I, yeah. So how about representation theory of the uh, corresponding uh, like between you see you have this uh, correspondence between uh, Lie groups and real algebras, right? So what can you yeah. say about representations? Uh, representations here. Uh, the general definition of representation can be defined. So if we, uh, namely, it uh, represents on a vector space V uh, together with a linear map, say T, then it is, yeah, we can define a representation and define the cohomology. And uh, this representation, we can also take differentiation to obtain the representation of the corresponding, uh, corresponding, uh, Corresponding root of the algebra. So yeah, we have such functor. Uh, so, so actually, is it, is it sorry, is it in equivalence for some cases, like uh, equivalence of categories, right? Representation categories, right? You you, you said case theory. Yeah, no, no, no. Equivalence of categories, right? Of representation. So you see, in the classical case of Lie groups and Lie algebras, you have equivalence between representation of. Lie groups and uh, well, simple Lie groups and uh, the corresponding Lie algebras, right? So yeah. is, is something similar also have? Yeah, it's a very good question. Yeah, but uh, this is not a topic I want to say today, but I can say a little about it. So uh -huh. actually you can see, uh, so in this talk, I will mainly talk about differentiation, namely from Rotobax Lie group to Rotobax Lie algebra. But conversely, if you want to consider the integration problem, actually now there are some abstraction. So uh, in uh, another paper, we, we can only show that uh, now we can do the local integration, but uh, whether we can obtain the global integration now, uh, it is still open question. Yeah. Um, I see, I see. So, yeah, so, but, so, uh, what, what, so what is abstraction? Is, is it described by some cohomology? Yeah, we hope it is uh, some cohomology or some topological abstraction, but uh, it is not clear now. But uh, we what we can do now is give the local integration. But uh, for how to obtain the global integration, what is the precise abstraction? It is not clear now. Yeah, it's a very good question. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so let's see some example. So, so this example, uh, yeah, we compare uh, the algebra case and the group case. So recall that in the algebra case, so the, the minus of projection, it is the root box operator of with one. Then in the group case, so we consider the inverse. Yeah, we consider the inverse map, it is the root box operator of with one. Yeah, so they are pedal. So, and uh, in the algebra case, you can see, uh, if G is the direct sum of two sub algebras, then we say that there are two root box operators, namely the minus of projections. And uh, there are similar results in the group level, namely uh, if, if G yeah, is the direct product of two subgroups, then we can consider the projection and the inverse, you can see. So the inverse of the projection, it is a root box on G. Based on this result, actually, there are many, many concrete examples. For example, we know that in the groups, there are many decompositions. So these decompositions are, will provide many, many examples. Yeah. But for root box operators, we will give more examples later. Okay. Uh, now we consider some properties. Uh, so recall that this is the this is the formula in the algebra level and this is the formula in the group level. So we know that in the algebra level, so a root box operator will induce a new Lie algebra, which is called the descendant Lie algebra. So here is a concrete formula. So this is another formula. So based on this fact, then we between there are two Lie algebra structures on a vector space G. So then using this fact, actually we can uh, study integrable systems. And this is what 
Semenovsky's Sensky date in his paper. Okay, so there are, there are, there is a new Lie-Jeber structure on, on G is, is very important actually. So, so we want to know whether this result holds in the group level. Okay, so yeah, it holds. So more precisely, so let G B be a Rotobaxa Lie group. Then on G, we can define a new multiplication. We denote by star. So G star H is equal to G A D B G H. Okay. Then this star is also a Lie group. Uh, it is called the descendant Lie group. Moreover, if we consider the differentiation of this new group, it is exactly the descendant the uh, algebra. And then uh, this curly B is also a root box operator on this D group. Moreover, this curly B is a homomorphism. Yeah. So the result is totally parallel to the case of algebras. Mm. Maybe due to the limit of time, maybe I skip this example. Okay. And uh, yeah, maybe here I talk about a factorization theorem of Rotobox D groups. So you recall that a Rotobox operator on a D group will induce a new D group, this star product, and we denote this group by G, uh, clay B. Okay. Uh, then we can define another map, uh, which is denoted by B plus. Here is the formula B plus G is equal to G B G. Then both B and B plus are Lie group morphisms from G B to G. Since they are Lie groups, Lie group morphisms, so according to the fundamental theorem of morphisms, we know that the image of B plus and the image of B, which denoted by which are denoted by G plus and G minus, so they are subgroups, and and uh, uh, the kernel. So the kernel of B and the kernel of B plus, they are denoted by K plus and K minus. So they are normal, they are normal the subgroups of, of GB. Okay. And moreover, so we have this isomorphism. What's important is that this K plus is contained in G plus and the K minus is contained in G minus. Moreover, they are normal the subgroups. Uh, since they are normally subgroups, so we have quotient group. So, uh, so here is a quotient group, and this is a quotient group. And then we can define this this theta, this map defined by this formula. Yeah, defined by this formula, and uh, then this theta we can show that it is a Lie group isomorphism. Okay, so we can obtain a Lie group morphism from this quotient group to this quotient group. Okay. And then we can define a subset G theta. It is a subset of G plus times G minus. So here G plus times G minus, it is simply the product Lie group. Namely, given two Lie group, we can obtain the product Lie group. So the Lie group structure uh, on it is very easy. And uh, we, we, we consider this subset defined by this formula. So G plus G minus is uh, in this space, but they are satisfying this condition. Yeah. So is, is it some sort of pullback? Mm, yeah. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we can define this subset then. We can show that this G theta is a subgroup. Subgroup, okay. And moreover, we define a map phi from G to G theta. Define phi G to be B plus G, B G. And then this phi is a Lie group isomorphism from G B to G theta. So this G theta is actually isomorphic to G B. Okay. And then Based on these facts, we can obtain the factorization theorem. So let G B be a rotobox Lie group, then every element G can be uniquely expressed as G equals to G plus times the inverse of G minus. Here, G plus G minus are in G theta. Okay. So we call it the factorization theorem of rotobox Lie groups. So here we can see 
So this factorization is global. It's global. So it is a slightly different different from the Minovsky-Sensky's approach to obtain the local uh, factorization theorem for the groups. Okay. And uh, yeah, because because uh, Semenovsky-Sensky using this factorization to study integrable systems, so uh, so it is also possible to give more applications uh, using this global factorization theorem. But uh, we are not quite familiar with integral systems. It is still under under consideration. Yeah. So here, I think I skipped this part about the application to Hamiltonian systems. Okay. But uh, maybe I say one word. The, the the key observation is that there are two Lie algebra structures on G. So we know G is a Lie algebra, and uh, another Lie algebra structure is induced by this Rotopax of our operator. So there are two Lie algebra structures, and then we can use it to study Hamiltonian systems. Okay. So because here I omit this part. Okay. Now we come to uh, the second important uh, structure, namely post group. So here I gave the, the, the definition of post-group. So it is a group G equipped with another binary operation on G, such that the following two equalities are satisfied. So the first equality says that for this triangle, we have the corresponding left multiplication. So defined obviously by this formula, then we require this left multiplication to be an automorphism of the group G, namely this formula is satisfied. So this uh, axiom is very easy to be understood because in the level of post the algebras, recall that the left multiplication is a derivation. So here in the group level, we know that the integration of a derivation is an automorphism. So it is naturally to obtain this condition okay and uh, the following weighted associativity for this multiplication is given by this formula so we require this condition holds and uh, this condition is a little mysterious and uh, actually from the following result we can know what does it mean okay actually if we consider this term namely a times the bracket of A triangle B. If we consider this term, actually, it will give rise to a new group structure. And then we can explain this equality very well. Okay. So here's the result. So let G dot triangle be a post group. Then we can define a new multiplication denoted by this circle Sorry. by this formula. Sorry, can, can I ask you? Uh, you see, can you give one non-trivial example of post-group? It's uh, kind of hard to see what we're... an example of post-group, right? Non-trivial example. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe later I will give several classes of example. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe later. Maybe later. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Yeah, so it turns out it turns out that this is a group, and also E is the unit, and the inverse map is given by this formula. Um, moreover, so we consider this left multiplication. It is an action of this new group on the original group. Okay, so this theorem is very important to understood. To understand uh, the definition of post group, namely, you can see this equality. So, this equality is very mysterious. Actually, it tells us that so this guy is a new group structure. And moreover, so this equality tells us that so this new group actually acts on the original group. So, the first condition tells us that. 
the left multi the left multiplication is a, is an automorphism, and this equality says that is a it is a homomorphism. So then it is an action. So it is very important to understand the definition. Yeah. Okay. And this new group is called the sub adjacent group of the post group. Okay. Yeah. So this is definition, and this theorem is very important to understood to understand this definition. And uh, uh, so we want to show that uh, taking the differentiation, we can obtain post the algebra. So here we also uh, give rise to some uh, preparations. So let G be a post the Lie group, and we know that this G is uh, the Lie algebra of the Lie group G, and we denote my alt G and the third G to be the Lie group of automorphisms and the Lie algebra of derivations. Uh, since uh, L A triangle is an automorphism, so it follows that. Is tangent map is an automorphism of the corresponding algebra G. So we obtain a map uh, still denoted by L triangle from G to out small g. And then we take the differentiation, we obtain a map from uh, the algebra G to the G. Namely, uh, the above process can be uh, summarized by this this formula, so we have this left multiplication from G to G. Actually, we we have take some differentiation, and then we again take another differentiation. We obtain this map from the algebra G to the G. Okay, so as soon as we have this map, we can define a new binary multiplication on G by this formula. So just using this map, we just obtain. So if we use ESP, we can have this formula. Then we can show that. So this the algebra G together with this bilinear multiplication we defined just now, it is a post the algebra. Okay. So uh, the, the the proof is similar to the proof of Rotobox operators. So I will not repeat it here again. Okay, so we can do differentiation perfectly. Okay, and then uh, we come to the third part. Namely, we want to consider the relation between the box operators and the post groups. Okay, so let B from B from H to G be a relative of the boxer on a group G with this Pack to an action phi, then we can define a new binary product on the D group H by this formula. So B of H is in G, and then using this action, this guy is in H. So we can define a new binary multiplication, new binary multiplication on H. Then it turns out that it is a post group. Yeah. So from root box operator. We can naturally obtain post group. So, this will provide the first class of examples of post group, namely from a root box operator, and we can obtain post group. Yeah. And now there are already some concrete study of root box operators on some groups, some very concrete examples. Yeah. So, this is the first class of examples. And conversely, conversely, uh, given a post group, we know there are new group and action. We know there are new group and action. Then it turns out that the identity map, identity map from G to G, it is a relative of the box operator on the sub adjacent group G with respect to the action on the group G. Yeah. So actually, this G is the original group, and this G. Is a sub adjacent group and the identity map is a relative to the box operator. Yeah, so these two results give very clear relation between relative to the box operator on group and the post group. Yeah, actually, we can enhance these results to be functors. Yeah, okay. Mm. 
uh, here, maybe let me see whether I need to, whether I have time, yeah. So here I gave some, uh, maybe called application of a box operator, maybe. Namely, uh, it will give rise to some factorization of groups also. So here we let B be a map. So here just a map, yeah. Then uh, we can define an invertible map, a cosine B, as follows. So we can define an invertible map. And then, so on the right hand side, so this kind, we know that, that there's an action phi of G on H. So we have this semi direct product group. So on the right hand side, there, there, there is a very simple group structure. And uh, here we define an invertible map. So we can pull back this, this simple group structure to this site. And uh, we can transfer this group structure on H times G. So we obtain a new group. But for this new group, in general, H and G are not subgroup anymore. So if H and G are still subgroup, we need some condition on B. And this condition turns out to be the Rotterbox condition. So here's the result. So if this star, this, this star product is also a group such that H and G are subgroup, if and only if B is a relative Rotterbox or is a relative Rotterbox operator on G with respect to action phi. Actually, we know that if a group uh, Factorization into two subgroup, then we obtain a match pair of groups. So this this result tells us that so from a root box operator B, we can obtain a match pair of groups, and this fact is very important in our later study. Okay, namely we can use this fact to construct uh, young buster equations. Okay, uh, so sorry, I, sorry, I didn't understand one thing. Can you go back to the, the, the previous? So when you pull back, right? When you pull back the structure on the uh, semi-direct product, isn't that gonna yeah. be the semi-direct product itself? I mean, what exactly mean pulling pull back? I mean, it's, uh, let me see, it's an invertible map. Ah, yeah. it's not a, I saw yeah. a group homotopies, it's just a map. Yeah, so it is a map, then we can obtain a new group and this cosine B will, will be a group isomorphism. But this group is, uh, yeah, even though it is isomorphic to the semi direct no, product. Yeah, yeah. The, the, what's not clear is that you see, you're pulling back the, the, the structure, but why is it, why is it, gr gr uh, uh, it's group, right? Uh, but isn't yeah. this group isomorphic to the semi direct product then? Yeah, it is isomorphic. No, no, as a group. Yeah, it is isomorphic. To the to this semi-direct product as group, but G and H are not a subgroup anymore. Even though these two big groups are isomorphic, but, but, um, but there is a but there is a copies of H and G which are inside of the new one. Yeah, but uh, H and G are are not subgroup anymore. Yeah, but you see, but the isomorphic copy of H and G is a subgroup of the new one. I mean, it all depends how you pull back, right? You can pull back the H. I mean, you see, when you, uh, is it true actually what I'm saying? You, you, you can see on the right hand side, it is a group. Then right. we have a invertible map. So we can pull uh -huh. back, the, we right. can pull back the group structure to obtain a new group. Yeah. So, uh -huh. because cosine is the pullback, so these two groups are isomorphic, no problem. Uh -huh. Yeah, but the point is, on this new group, on this new group, right? H and G in general are not a subgroup anymore. Yeah, and what's what's the what's the uh, what's the benefit of it? The benefit is, if B is a rotobox operator, then we can uh -huh. get rid that H and G are subgroup. Namely, uh, H and G are subgroup, we can obtain match pair. So I see. So it's in a way it's a kind of characterization, right? Of uh, yeah, yeah. the box of the periods. 
Okay. 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 Uh, yeah. So uh, we define the box operator and also define this post group. So this post group seems very abstract. So yeah, naturally ask uh, whether there are some examples where why it is useful. So here I provide several uh, structures which is related to post groups and the max operators. So the first structure is skew left braces. So uh, by definition, a skew left brace is a triple and consists of two groups. So this codot and this circle, they are, they are groups. And uh, uh, these two group structures satisfy this compatibility condition, this compatibility condition. So this is the definition of skew left brace. In particular, if this group is abelian, then it is called brace. Okay. So yeah, actually, yeah, we just learned this structure. Uh, uh, yeah. So many people worked on this area and there are many excellent job. Yeah, because it is related to the Young bus location. Yeah, there are many good work on this subject. Then, so remember that so a post group gave a new group called a sub subadjacent group. So a post group will naturally provide a two group structure. So then you naturally hope that they are skew left brace. And this is true. Yeah. So let's, oh, maybe I say, this is the, I say this result may be first. So let G be a post group. Then recall that we have this sub adjacent group. Then these two group structure form a skew left brace. And conversely, given a skew left brace, we can define a new binary product triangle by this formula. Then it turns out that this uh, G together with this group and this triangle. It is a post group. So the category of post groups and the category of skew left braces, they are isomorphic. So from this point of view, uh, skew left braces will provide another classes of examples of post groups. Okay. And uh, the next uh, application is Young Buster equation. So uh, we can show that a post group will give rise to a breeding group and then lead to a solution of the Young Bus equation. Uh, because uh, just now we said that a rotobox operator, uh, yeah, so here actually match pair play a very important role. Yeah, match pair, but uh, maybe I don't, I do not have uh, enough time. Maybe so I skip the definition of Young Bus equation. And maybe I show the main result. Uh, show the main result. Mm. So uh, from a post group, we can define Rg from g times g to g times g by this formula. Uh, so this is the post group structure. Yeah. And then we can show that this guy is a breeding group. Then it will give rise to a solution of the Young Bus equation okay, on the set G. So here, uh, the solution is a set theoretical solution. Okay. Then, since relative dot box operator induces post group, so relative dot box operator also uh, induces solution of the Young Bus equation. So this is a corollary, namely, uh, given B is a dot box operator, and then we define RB by this formula, so it is a solution of the Young Bus equation. Okay. So this is uh, the second ap uh, application. So maybe I give another classes of post group. Uh, post group. Oh, maybe I forgot to say uh, what is pre group. Maybe I add a comment. So uh, we know pretty algebra and pretty algebra are very important as a class of non-associative algebra. There are many applications of pretty algebras. So 
it's naturally considered what is the integration of a pretty algebra. Uh, so here we know pretty algebra are special post algebra, and then we give the integration of post algebra. So we naturally obtain the integration of pretty algebra, namely what is a pre group. So maybe I go back later. So uh, here, what is a pre group? So if this group G is abelian, if the original group G is abelian, then we obtain a pre group. We, we define it to be a pre group. Yeah. So a pre group is an abelian group such that there is another binary operation satisfying the following equality. Okay. So we naturally obtain what is a pre group. So it shows that you, you want to consider pre group, you need to consider a, an abelian group, not just an arbitrary set. Okay. Uh, so uh, here, I go on to say what is a butcher group. So this butcher group also it comes from uh, numerical integration. Namely, they consider the differential equation and they want to consider the formal Taylor exp expansion of the solution. So then it's very surprised that uh, we should use the free pretty algebra in the formal Taylor expansion. And then in these studies, they they define uh, what is a butcher group. So they define a butcher group, which is very important in this area. And then we find that actually on this butcher group BR, we can define a new multiplication. Then such that, so butcher group, we can show that this butcher group is actually the sub-adjacent group of the post group. Namely, on every butcher group, there is a, a post group structure. So this will provide another classes of examples of post group. Yeah. So actually, I'm a little bit cheating here. Actually, this butcher group, actually, uh, this group is abelian. And actually, here it is a pre group. And uh, if we want, we consider a more general Lee butcher group, then we obtain a post group. And uh, there are also another classes of examples, namely uh, we consider P group and the P is an opera. So given an opera, we can define GP and, uh, and, uh, and on GP, there is a group structure called the P group. Uh, and we can show that every P group gives rise to a post group. So due to the limit of the time, maybe uh, I, I'm, I will be a little faster. So we can define GP, and uh, it is well known that GP is a group which is called the P group. And then we can define a new abelian group structure on this P group. Uh, and then we can show that on this P group, there is a post group such that the sub adjacent group exactly is the P group. Okay. So, yeah, I think. Uh, these are all the contents uh, I want to talk. And uh, here are the references. Mm, so mainly the main contents are contained in, this, in these two papers. And also there are uh, some recent developments. Uh, as, as soon as we define what is the root box operator on group, so uh, there are some further studies immediately. So for example, uh, I think the first study is by Gong So uh, uh, as soon as we gave the definition of a root factor operator on group, so he realized that we can define root factor operator on co-commutative Hopf algebras. And, uh, and he defined such structures and show that if we consider group-like elements and uh, uh, Primitive elements we can obtain rotobox group and rotobox Lie algebra immediately. So yeah, it, it, it's very good. And uh, then Fadkov and Kubayev found that uh, so from rotobox operators we can uh, we can obtain skew left braces and uh, and uh, also uh, construct solutions of the Yamasa equation. 
and uh, and in this paper, so they start a root box operator on some semi groups and also consider the young box equation. And uh, I think on I think on this paper, uh, there are many concrete examples on of root box root, root box operators on groups. Yeah, and uh, yeah. And here uh, they 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 consider those box operator from some cohomological point of view and also give some examples. And recently, uh, recently Zhonghua Li uh, they started those box systems and the skew two six. Yeah, actually I'm not quite familiar what is skew two six. They define that structure and also show that from those box system by taking the Differentiation, yeah, we can between skew, uh, skew, skew choices. So I, I only uh, gave a list of several uh, recent development, not all of them, yeah. So probably I omit, yeah, I, yeah, not all the development. Okay. So I think that's all I want to say. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Shen. Let's thank our speaker. So please, any questions or comments? Um, can I ask a question? So uh, about this decomposition, can you go back to this decomposition of the group, right? To this G plus and G minus, I think those. G plus, G minus. Oh, okay. right, right, right. So you, you said this is possible if, uh, yeah, so there was a statement right later on. So what was this statement? That you have such decomposition if there is a rotor, rotor Baxter structure, right? Yeah. So is it, is it true that any rotor Baxter structure will, will induce this uh, decomposition of, or or probably rather, if I have some decomposition of a group, is it coming from the rotor Baxter or, or version of rotor Baxter structure? Because you see, in, in general, there is a more subtle uh, decomposition of the group, right? For example, there is this notion of amalgamated product and things like this, right? Are they yeah. coming from? So if you have the, the, the decomposition in advance, then there are, are, are naturally rotor box operators because you can consider just now I gave the, the example. So you can consider the projection, the, the, the inverse of the projection, then it is naturally, naturally rotor box operators. So this, uh, uh, this way is easier. So the, the, the difficult way is the converse, namely how can we obtain the, the, the decomposition? Uh, given i see i see i see yeah but okay so maybe another question then maybe related to this one so you see you on the on the, on the same set g right you have two different structure of the group right and yeah yeah, yeah. You have group homomorphism right actually this yeah. actually also applies for the Lie algebra case i mean is it is can this uh Lie algebra homomorphism be useful in the computation of uh, Lie algebra homology of original Lie algebra like you know you know since you have a homomorphism then probably there is associated spectral sequence right uh, which, yeah. which can be helpful. Right as a sequence. Yeah, you are you are, you are right. So, uh, so you see, uh, given a rotor box group, you have yeah. a new group, and then this this, this curly B is. Thread of group structures. Yeah. Right. So, so, so this this can can it be helped to 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 compute the the Lie group homomorphism or like you know like Lie, Lie group homology or just group homology because I mean it's applicable even for the for the groups the usual groups abstract groups right yeah yeah uh, yeah try, right? so here we can consider the usual group not necessarily Lie group uh, yeah yeah probably you are right yeah maybe it is helpful but we do not know now <laughs> yeah. I see. Okay. I see. A very good, very interesting question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. More questions, or Professor Wegemann? I, I had um, ju just a remark. Uh, if I understand correctly, then uh, cross modules of groups provide examples for relative rotor Baxter operators on on Lie groups. Uh, on groups first, and then you can leave everything to have B groups. And yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah. Cross, cross modules, then you have this big group. Yeah. And this is big group. 
Yeah, no, uh, not only Baker Group. I'm I'm saying uh, yeah. a more fundamental thing. I, I maybe you can go back to the definition of the relative rotor Baxter operator, and I think when you have a cross module of groups, then you have a relative rotor Baxter operator. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see this this uh, definition uh, uh, when you put the h from the right hand side to the left hand side yeah then you have yeah. the conjugation on on the left hand side yeah and then you, your equation just tells you uh, when you apply b uh, when you have the 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 Alpha relation for the cross module of groups, and you apply B to it on both sides, then you get your relative rotor Baxter operator equation. This is what I'm telling. So uh, every cross module of groups gives you a relative rotor Baxter operator. So gives you um, a post group, I think, and so will give you. Um, uh, solutions of the young Baxter equation. So it would be interesting to compute those solutions. As, as oh, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I don't know. I, I, I don't I, I don't know whether there are results to, to obtain solutions of the young Baxter equation from cross module directly. Mm. I, I don't think so. But, but, but uh, via your formalism, I think there are. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> thank you. I, I, I omitted to say uh, thank you for, for your very good talk and uh, thank also the organizers for this very nice seminar, which I in, very much enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. So thank if you. there is no comments or questions, let's thank Professor Sheng once more. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. It's um, my great pleasure. Yeah. So now there are no re restrictions for, for for traveling so so yeah i invite you some sometime in the future to visit china and visit my university yeah so okay. everyone is welcome so if you have some plan to come to china let me know yeah thank you thank you so thank you thank you everybody see you bye 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 bye